Hi, I'm Kevin Felderhoff, and today I'm going to demonstrate making a threaded acorn. Uh, threaded, actually, the easy way. What we're going to use is a bill tap, one and a quarter by eight, which most standard, your bigger lace, uh, the headstock, is this thread type, your robust, powermatic uh, on this. This is a one way, which is metric. But uh, we're going to thread these acorns. Make an acorn using the threads. Here's some acorns that I turned a month or so ago. And the one benefit of doing it this way, the actually the tops are interchangeable. Because we're standardizing basically everything on the on the uh, on the acorn. Uh, so advantages like I said, they're interchangeable. You don't have to make a multiple uh, jam chucks for the bottom. Uh, disadvantage is you're kind of limited on your, your wall thickness is thick, uh, kind of limited on your sizes and, and so forth. But if you wanted to get into, into threading, uh, this is a pretty easy way to get into it. Uh, just a quick note about the length and safety. Uh, you always want to make sure you wear your face shield. Always, uh, when you're starting up your lathe, spin the headstock, make sure you're free and clear, and always turn your lathe off when you're moving the uh, tool rest. Uh, just a few safety pointers. Now this particular acorn here, I made yesterday. And the threads are working just fine. But what happens is, with and the, the moisture meter on this particular piece of wood, when I checked it, it was dry. But usually on a piece of wood, the inside might be a little bit different. So what happens with threads and fitted boxes and so forth, that's go through the season, uh, make it here into the, the spring or the summer. It might be a little wetter. When it goes into your house over the winter, everything dries out, and all of a sudden everything changes. So we have a quick little... Uh, Solution for that, well actually after we turn them, we'll put them in a toaster oven for a couple of hours and then we will uh, re-chase the threads and then your acorn should work through the season. So this one, while I'm turning an acorn, I'll go ahead and put this one in the toaster oven and we'll let it sit and we'll check it after I finish and let's see how the threads are once I dry them. So, over here, I usually set the toaster oven to about, uh, about 175. Just keep it in there for just a couple hours. The threads are loose. Uh, it'll dry it out. And actually, the threads will change a little bit more than likely. The, the, the piece will not make up. Okay, so our top piece of wood. This is our top. And we want the grain orientation you now. Okay, so what we're going to start doing is make the top first. And our grain orientation needs to be quarter sawn wood. So, center of the tree was right here. You can see the grain lines are running this way. This block is uh, not quite square. I don't know who cut it. But it's two and a half by two and a half by roughly two inches deep. We're going to make the acorn right like come in right here just like this. So we're going to thread in this direction. We would call this the face. If we tried to thread it this way, more than likely it would not hold threads. Uh, so it's very important when you're threading that the grain orientation is correct. So we'll just get a block of wood in here. And when you're putting a block of wood, a square piece of wood in a chuck, make sure all four sides do hit.
Also, too, uh, in conjunction with this video, there's an article coming out in the AAW magazine at a later date that will be the steps of the video today on how to make this threaded acorn. So the first thing we're going to do, I always, always try to bring the tailstock up if there's room, just as a safety precaution. I say try to keep it up as long as possible. We'll bring the tool rest up a little bit below center. I'm going to use a bowl gouge to uh, round this up. We're going to round it up from here to here, and we're going to pour about two and a quarter inches diameter. So I'm going to face shield down, light is off, it's on zero. This is the firing zone right here. So anytime you wrap up the speed of a lathe, you want to try to stay out of this area as you bring it up. We'll bring it on up to speed. And we will round it up. Round now, I'm just going to flat net the surface, same surface. Tool is fully closed. Make a little bitty indentation for the force a bit. Find the center. Okay, so we're the first hole we're going to drill is a one and an eighth inch hole. Didn't quite get that flat there, but we'll get it. We'll get it and round it over. One and an eighth inch hole, one inch deep. So we'll, we'll slow the lathe down to about uh, four or five hundred. Turn the face shield down. Anytime you are, I want to get pull the tool rest out of the way so I can get my hand in there. Anytime you're drilling a hole on a lathe with a Jacobs chuck, always hold on to the Jacobs chuck because sometimes it can't stay inside the hole. Okay, we'll quickly check our depth. And we're right at one inch. We're going to stop it. We're going to change over to a one and three quarter inch. Okay, now we're going to drill a one and three quarter diameter hole for just about a quarter inch for a pocket. Hold on to the chest. And the reason I do that is if you scallop the top, the acorn looks a lot better. If you don't scallop the top, then this is not necessarily the set that needs to be done. We're going to chamfer the inside of the, of the hole so that will give the tap a place to start. Okay, now we'll turn it off. And now what we'll do is apply some mineral oil. Okay. This is your standard field tap. One and a, one and a quarter eight. And you can see right here where the mineral oil has come through on the end grain. It's soaking through already. Okay, so now we'll lock the headstock on the top of the lathe. We're locked there. You get the tap in there, lined up. In the bottom of your, your tap, there's a hole. And that's for the, the center punch of a live center. Uh, and, and that helps keep your drill straight. So as I drive it in, I'm slowly cranking the handle, but I'm not cranking with, with 
any pressure because I want, I want the tap to do all the work. And you can hear it cutting threads when it's making kind of a scratchy sound. Usually the threads are breaking. Like right now they sound pretty smooth. And you want to run it all the way down to the bottom and you'll fill the bottom. Right about there. So the tap is bottomed out. Now I'm going to ease it, ease it back out. That's when you always want to be a little careful. Loosen your tail stock. And you got to break that chip. You get a little resistance in the beginning. And I use a short wrench on purpose so I don't put a lot of leverage on the I have to zoom in, uh, we have some you know, pretty good threads there, threads that will work for this. I'm just going to run the dot tap right back in just to, there's the bottom. At any time, you, this is kind of would be considered a bottom tap, we're not, we're not tapping all the way through, and when you tap anything, a bottom tap, your first threads would be considered like perfect threads, but your back threads are imperfect threads. They're not fully formed. So we have maybe maybe a quarter inch worth of good threads and the rest is imperfect. Because on a bill tap, you don't get your first perfect thread until almost like three eighths of an inch in. The rest of them are imperfect. They're not fully formed yet. They're cut. Okay, so we got threads now. I'm going to unlock the leg. Bring, bring our tool rest up. Now all I'm going to do is shape the bottom part of the acorn. With a small spindle gouge or small bowl gouge, you'll shape the top part of the acorn up to the base's jaws, being careful not to hitting the jaws, and also turn it into that one and three quarter inch hole that we just drilled. The one and an eighth inch hole that we drilled is one inch deep, so we're also careful not to uh, Turn the acorn down too small to where we would hit the hole on the inside. Using the shear spray just to shape it a little bit. Do this one that little line there. Get rid of that off there. Okay. Off the leg, move the tool rest down. And at this point, I will sand the bottom portion of, of the uh, top of the acorn. This is just 180 grit. I just sand uh, 180 and 220 at the best. Uh, so I'm doing the bit right here. This stock was two inches. It would have been better just to use a longer, a little bit longer piece of wood, then I could have parted it off straight. So I'm going to take it out of the chuck and we'll turn those corners off after we make the bottom. The bottom is our jam chuck. So this piece just gets set aside for a little bit. And I want to put a bottom piece in there. Okay, on the overhead. 